Welcome to What's a Mom podcast. You are listening to doulas Petra and Jacqueline. Motherhood can be isolating and hard. We are two doulas who want to provide a safe place to talk about all things mom. From pregnancy to birth to postpartum to parenting. Join us as we have real conversations about real life. Welcome to What the Mom podcast. You are listening to doulas Petra and Jacqueline. Hi guys. Welcome to our podcast. If this is your first time, um, we hope that you enjoy it. And if you do, make sure you like and subscribe. And if it's not your first time, welcome back. Yay. Thank you. We are on episode number 30. I can't believe it. It's a big one. It is 30. Yeah, Yeah. there's 29 last time. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations to us. Pat us on the back. Just kidding. (laughs) It's been pretty fun. Yeah. I've been enjoying it. It, it, We've been talking about some really fun topics. So today's is all about how to prevent vaginal tearing during birth. That's a good one. I don't know about you, but when I first got pregnant, that was like the first thing that came into my head. I was like, oh no, watermelon size thing is going to (laughs) come out of me. I'm going to tear from my butt, you know, from my vagina to my butt. Yeah, it's a common fear. Yes, absolutely. And rightfully so. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I had no clue that you could, like, do things to prevent it. So, yeah. Lucky for me, I didn't prepare really at all. But I didn't tear during any of my births. So I'm very blessed. Not even just a little? No, nothing. Nice. She said it, like, grazed, like, a little bit bended. Because obviously, so maybe a micro tear. Yeah. So they were like, there's nothing we can like stitch. So, yeah. You're good. I was like, all right. Yeah. Well, I mean, the vagina can stretch a lot. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. And things like they might change a little bit down there like that's normal but it it shouldn't change like so much that you can't enjoy sex after stuff no absolutely it might not be exactly the same and like the tightness but for the most part but it shouldn't be like like really awful no it shouldn't also sometimes after sex women can have like yeah prolapses and stuff but that's not you know after birth Yeah, after yeah. birth. Yeah, exactly. Um, but as far as tearing goes, like, there's things you can do to prevent it. A lot of people did it. People don't even know. Um, I remember, oh, man, it was so funny. As soon as they found out I was pregnant, like, that was the first thing that came into my head. And then, I don't know, like, I feel like I just got lucky. In my first birth, I wasn't really educated at all in anything. I just knew that I didn't want to go to the hospital. Um, but the things I know now, like I wish I would have known going into my yeah. first pregnancy, you know? So well, things, they can still go well if you're not educated and you don't know, but I mean, it yeah. doesn't hurt to educate yourself just in case, because we never know what kind of birth story we're going to end up with. Absolutely. And it can go either way. Mm-hmm. You just, you're not really sure. So, yeah. True. We just thought we would share some tips and um, yeah. things that have helped us or helped other people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, I guess we can start by talking about the types of tears. Mm-hmm. So, the common, like, terminology is you'll hear it was a first degree tear, second degree tear, third degree tear, or fourth degree tear. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's just a, a bunch of numbers. <laughs> yeah. But basically, first degree tear, it's just a little bit of the perennial skin. So that means that's that space right between um, the vaginal opening and the, the anus, that little bit yeah. of skin. Yeah. And so it's just some a little bit of the skin has been torn. And that first degree tear won't require any kind of stitches. It might sting when you're um, going yeah. pee after you give birth. Yeah. But it'll heal on its own. You don't need to really yeah. do anything. Um, it's just very yeah. minor. Yeah. It's, if someone's going to tear, that's probably the most common. 
It's just a first degree tear. Yeah. Um, I did have a first degree tear with my third. Third, I think it was. Yeah. And I didn't need any kind of stitches, but it just kind of healed on its own. Mm -hmm. um, then we have our second degree tear, which means it's that perennial skin, plus it's the muscle underneath that skin. So that's more painful. And so again, that's going to hurt. Like it's going to sting a little bit when you pee, but that does require stitching, usually just a couple little stitches. But um, because it's the muscle, they need to kind of um, stitch together the, the layers so that the muscle layer and then the skin layer to help it come back together. Otherwise, um, you can have problems or you can have other problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, stitching is not exactly comfortable, but I mean, it's better than having problems later. So, <laughs> absolutely. So what they would do is, um, they would freeze down there unless you had an epidural already, then you're, you don't feel it. And then they would stitch it up for you. And yeah. then it takes the second degree tear heals sooner, like within a week or two, it's usually fine. Yeah. Um, and they, I think nowadays they always give stitches that are like self dissolving so they don't have to take them out later. Yeah. I've heard that too. Which is more convenient. <laughs> yeah. Then we have third degree tear. And again, this is not very common, thankfully, but this is the perineal skin, the perineal muscle, but it's also extending to the anal sphincter, which is the muscle on the outside of the anus, like right on the outside of your butthole. Mm -hmm. This one is usually more painful. It's going to hurt when you're sitting in certain positions. Yeah. Um, it will need to be stitched. Um, more stitches. Yeah. Required. More stitches for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, it's not as common. And then we have the fourth degree tear, which is not common at all, but it, it can happen. Mm -hmm. And that means you've had the tear completely through to the anus. Mm -hmm. It's a really bad tear. And this usually is more than just stitches. It usually requires going to the operating room and having like yeah. surgery to, to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Like, and you'll, if you have a third or fourth degree tear, you'll usually have um, a little more struggles with having bowel movements after it'll just kind of, sometimes it'll leak out on its own. It'll probably hurt. So these are, that's like, I think I read somewhere that third and fourth degree tears are like only 3% of people. Thank goodness. Cause that's awful. You know what I just thought of? What's that? The worst one when they actually take a scalpel and cut you that's when you have an episiotomy yes yeah. so you don't want that but yeah. that's when they cut from one end to the other and uh yeah I have friends who've had that and they said it is horrible and yeah you're sitting on a donut for months so yeah <laughs> I just thought of that now I was like oh yeah there's episiotomies yeah you don't want one <laughs> Well, for quite a while, they just automatically gave women an episiotomy, assuming, well, if they're going to tear anyways, we're just going what? to do this so that it prevents the tearing from being worse, so that it doesn't spread to a worse like scenario. Yeah, to get severe. Oh. But the, the biggest problem with them mm. is that it's like a straight cut. It's not a natural mm -hmm. tear, like a way your body would naturally tear. So it's very, oh. very, that's why it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. I can't yeah. imagine. No, I honestly can't. I have a friend that that happened to, and yeah. she's like, it was horrible. And she wants to have another one. So she's like, no, tell me all your tips. I don't want this. Like, <laughs> so yeah, not oh. fun. And those aren't super common either. Not yeah. as much more yet. But if they we'll ask share some. Yeah, yeah if we'll you get some ways. Physiotomy, then we strongly suggest you say no, thank you. <laughs> Just say, um, how about no? <laughs> exactly. Do you want an episiotomy? Just kidding. No. If they ask so, you, say no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Don't I ask guess questions. Just say no. <laughs> exactly. Do anything you can to not have that. 
So that um, kind of leads into our first, um, our first point, which would be to help you prevent it. Avoid yeah. interventions. Yeah. I would say the first one. What did you put? Like, what are we? We want no, to talk just, about just avoiding interventions. Yeah, because interventions are going to make it more likely. Yeah, to for you to tear. So that could be a few Absolutely. different things. So an episiotomy is one intervention. Mm -hmm. um, even an epidural can make it more likely because you can't feel when you're pushing. It does not necessarily mean you automatically will. I had an epidural no. first, and I I had a micro tear, like barely. It was almost barely. Like yeah, exactly. Um, so it doesn't mean it will, but it's more likely because you can't feel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a few different kind of interventions. So, and like uh, forceps, forceps and yeah. vacuum. Yeah, that can cause a woman to tear. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So avoiding interventions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As best you can. Obviously, listen to your healthcare provider because if like baby's in danger, I mean, I would probably do like the vacuum over an episiotomy or whatever. But like, just know that you have options and yeah, to use your voice. That yeah. would be my advice. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure my mom said that they used forceps for me when I was born. Really? And my head looked like an egg. Like it was like pointy on the top. <laughs> With forceps. <laughs> because of being really? pulled in. Yeah. Wow. I have actually heard that. And like vacuum babies too. I have heard yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, thank you. It's not anything that I wanted unless it was absolutely necessary. <laughs> I would take that over a C-section. Yeah, because... If I had to. Yeah, because the healing process of a C-section is much more difficult. It, it would be a lot more intense, but who knows? I mean, if you're in that, if you're in that situation, you would yeah. decide really quickly what you want to do. That is true. Right? So... So, <clears throat> then something else to think about, another point... Number two is gentle pushing. Oh, yes. And pushing, how did you say it is? Like you like naturally push the baby out. What's that called? Oh, the uh, fetal ejection reflex. ejection reflex. Yes, yes, yes. That's another way that you can do it and prevent tearing. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's actually probably the best way. Yeah. Because it's your body doing it and it's you're yeah. not forcing it at all. So for anyone who doesn't yeah. know what that is, if you wait, like you'll feel, you'll have this urge during contractions of, at one point where you'll feel like, okay, I, the baby's like coming and I just have to push this baby out. If you resist that urge and you don't, and you just keep wait, letting your contractions come, then eventually those contractions will actually start to push the baby on their own. And it's the coolest yeah. thing. I, I let that happen with my third and my fourth and it was... It was really, really cool. My body pushed this baby out and I didn't need to. So my third, I wow. shared this in my third story that I, ha I let this happen, but then her heart rate dropped. And so the midwife said, I need you to push with the next contraction to get this baby out because we're worried. And mm -hmm. then I did actually push with one contraction, but my body was already doing it. So the baby came flying out. I'm on my hands and knees on the bed. I, I tried to put my hand down to grab the baby. She came out so fast. I missed her. The midwife had her hands down there. She missed her. My husband, Tom, he, like, he just watches this baby come flying out and just like plop on the bed. And he's like, <laughs> nobody caught the baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ready, aim, fire. For real. Yeah. But my body wow. was already doing it, right? So. <laughs> That's crazy. So when you had the push, you just gave it a lot more oomph and it came flying much, out. Yeah. <laughs> I think wow. she was almost there anyways, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And then I did the same thing with my fourth. Yeah. I just let the my body do its thing. And uh, I think it was, I had the same kind of thing. At the very end, she told me to, to do a push. 
um, because the baby's the head kind of came out. We were waiting for the shoulders. Yeah. And I was having a water birth. So she said, Oh, it's been a couple of minutes. Like I'm um, just gonna help position shoulder. baby, and then you can push with the next one. And then I was like, Okay. So I and pushed with it and the baby came, came out. out. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm sure I'm if that was a land birth, that baby would have flown out too. <laughs> <laughs> oh and i love it yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah it is really cool it really is yeah I've but that's probably that. the one of the most gentle ways but if you're actually feeling like you want to do the pushing just yeah. make sure you don't go like 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 i'm gonna push down like i'm like pushing out a poo like that's like a horrible way to do it i did that with my second and had horrible tearing because yeah. of so learn from me what mm -hmm. not to do. <laughs> yeah. Because then. Uh, gentle. Yeah. Because then the rest of the pushing hurt because I had already tore. And it Ow. was not, not great. Yeah. Yeah. The gentle. And um, any training like um, birth courses that you take, they'll always tell you the same thing. Like just gentle gentle pushes with contractions right mm -hmm. not in between but you follow your body with the contractions yeah that um, gives you way less chance of tearing absolutely mm. yeah and then point number three breathing through it oh gosh yeah sometimes that's so hard but yes as soon as you stop you know breathing just can make it worse and yeah do not hold your breath <laughs> breathe your baby out yeah 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 so there's a couple ways you can do it you can do like the the shallow short breaths like the mm -hmm. <sighs> that method can work um mm -hmm. i didn't do that but i know a lot of women who have done that and they said that it helped yeah or you can do the J breathing, which is taking a big deep breath. And then you slowly breathe out with your contraction and you imagine your air, the breath that you breathe in being um, going through your body like a J and being pushed out with the baby. Okay, that, cool. That helps like push um, the baby out, like using the right muscles. So mm. if you're pushing down like a bowel movement, mm -hmm. you're actually constricting the muscles that are pushing the baby. Oh, wow. So that's why I've never I, actually heard that term. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, hypnobirthing definitely uses J breathing. Wow. That's cool. I yeah. didn't know that. That's neat. Yeah. But that can help a lot too. Absolutely. Staying calm. Yeah, exactly. And when you have um, calm, gentle breaths, whether it's slow or just the shallow ones, that can help you with not holding your breath and mm -hmm. with staying calm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Huge. Definitely important. Yeah. So then the next one is you can use a warm compress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that can help some women feel like this helps so um you can take like a, a warm washcloth or something like that and just kind of hold it on the perineum while you're yeah. pushing or in between pushing um whether it's you or whether it's your partner doing it yeah um just gently pushing on there can help like keep it kind of like i don't know what the word is i guess like lubricated, lubricated. Yeah, if it's really dry, it can tear a lot more. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. And the warmth too helps as well with it. Um, just relaxing the muscles and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, then, um, again, with the warmth, could be our next point, point number five water. Hydro birth, hydro, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is why, yeah, that's why a lot of women love water birth. 
You loved it. Did you not just love I it? Like I just didn't have it until my fourth. <laughs> I know. And I had it two times. And then my third, I had to transfer to the hospital. Yeah. And I was so bummed. But thank goodness I still had a good experience. I did not tear on land. But I would say 100%. I would always choose water. Yeah. It's like just takes the pressure away too. It just does. It, does. it really helps that. Yeah. It's true. Um, and you can do that in a birth pool or in a bathtub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. My favorite. Yeah, it is good. <laughs> yeah. Um, then um, this one's a little bit more controversial. Some people believe it works. Some people don't. Um, but perennial massage. Absolutely. It can. Yeah. So basically perineal massage is just um, putting some oil on the perineum and um, just gently kind of massaging it. The idea is that you're loosening the muscles. Um, I think people say that you're supposed to start this like before birth. So in your yeah. third semester. But I mean, I never tried it because it just kind of wasn't my thing. Yeah. But I've heard people say that that it. I haven't tried it either, but I have heard people say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So that if that's something that reson resonates with you, then you could look into trying that as well. Absolutely. Um, release of oxytocin. That's a big it, one. Which can happen yeah. a few ways. Mm -hmm. So um, this can happen by having your partner with you and just, um, you can kiss during labor. There's, there's literally no rules saying you can't. Yeah, so why not? You started to. that way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the baby had to get in there somehow. <laughs> Through love and oxytocin, it's got to come out. Yeah. Um, True. Yeah. So you can... You can kiss, even if there's people in the room. But I, if you're someone who doesn't like PDA, you're also allowed to say to everyone, hey, can you just give us a few minutes and then come mm -hmm. back? If you want mm -hmm. some privacy, you can do that. Yeah. Some people do what's called tenting. So they put like a blanket over them. So you and your partner, you have a blanket over you. And then you it's like you have your own little private space. Yeah. You still have your healthcare team like close by. If you wanted, you can kiss under there. Um, if you wanted, you could ask for some privacy for a few minutes and you can have your partner, um, like ask your husband or whatever and say, Hey, you know, can you, as weird as it sounds, play with my breasts. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. You just don't want anything going down there by the vagina. That's all. But everything else, like if that's something you're, you feel comfortable with, you're, you're allowed to. Yeah, absolutely. Release the oxytocin. Um, even yeah. just gentle massage, like the light touch massage, like just like maybe um, touching hair on your face, tucking your hair behind your ears, gently touching your arm or your back. Yeah. Sometimes that's really um, nice too. Any kind yeah. of intimacy. Yeah. That's a good one for sure. Mm -hmm. And laughter. Yeah. If you want to go like the non, like not as intimate kind of way, but like laughter is really good too for releasing oxytocin. Yeah. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Lots of things you can do. There definitely is. There really um, is. Some people will use evening primrose oil. Yes, I tried. That was also, I guess I did that mostly because my midwife was like, you can um, dilate that way. Like you can soften the oh, cervix yeah. and make it easier for labor. Yeah. That's what I heard anyways. <laughs> my labors were like two and a half days. So I don't know if it worked for me. But, <laughs> but maybe, who knows? Maybe that helped me not tear. Maybe. I'll never know. I was just told that it softens the cervix. Yeah. Yeah. I was told it can help speed things along when it actually starts to happen. But yeah. 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 
So the, I think the recommended way is taking like evening primrose oil like capsules, breaking it open and like actually putting it inside by your, around your cervix, right? Yeah. Or you could just shoot it up there. Like with a syringe? Apparently. Or like, just like oh. put the capsule because it would like dissolve or whatever. Would it? I guess. So I never like did it, so I didn't look into this enough, but yeah, I don't know. Yes, um, I was, I I was told by someone that you can also ingest it. It just might not work as yeah. well. Yeah, if you open it, that makes sense for sure. Yeah, there's something that can like activate. Yeah, they say, anyways. Yeah, but it's it's like the natural induction methods, right? Like they may or may not work. You kind of have yeah. to decide what you feel comfortable with trying. Yeah, exactly. You just never know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then the last good point is knowing good positioning for pushing. Oh, absolutely. This that is, is huge. This one is probably one of the biggest ones, I would say. I told my friend, because she's going to have a baby, I said, whatever you do, talk to your doctor beforehand if you are going to have a vaginal birth and ask if you can birth on your hands and knees, it is like the best position. It is the best position to baby yeah. for, for baby to actually come down into the birth canal mm -hmm. and like actually come out the easiest way. Like there's so many benefits, less risk of tearing. There's so many things. And yeah, the best thing to do is just to advocate for yourself. What's mm -hmm. the worst thing they're going to tell you? No, like, it's, I mean, place, yeah. I would not be birthing on my back. No. Every single time I was on the bed, uh, sorry, when I when I was on the bed the first the last time, I was on hands and knees, and they didn't say nothing because I was already on there. <laughs> and even if they did, I'd be like, I'm not moving. Yeah, exactly. So, well, you want anything with gravity? Mm-hmm. Squatting. Yeah. But the yeah. reason hands and knees are nice is because then you can put your head down and rest between contractions. That's why I liked it too. I was the same. I loved that. Yeah. I think every single one of my births, I ended up on hands and knees just instinctually. Yeah. Me too. It just felt the best at that point. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cuz e even my epidural birth, I remember saying to them like uh -huh. it was taking so long. <laughs> We were like almost an hour and a half. And I'm like, this baby needs to come out. I need gravity. And my midwife looks at me and she's like, you um, can't stand. <laughs> you an epidural. I'm like, no, I can feel like a little bit. Like I just, you just need to help me get up. So they, they put the bar on the end of the bed and they have um, the midwife <laughs> and my husband they, and my mom, like all three of them, they're helping me get up on my hands and knees to holding onto the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and I had an epidural. <laughs> and, and I was leaning forward. It was it, it was a lot harder. <laughs> You're like, this is happening. It helped. Gravity helped. It totally helped. It always does. I was like, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> You're just so funny. You're just like, I don't care if I can't feel my legs. I'm like, it's taking too long. This is I just want this baby out. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally got on my hands and knees, even with an effort. <laughs> I'm not saying that everyone needs to do that. <laughs> I did. You do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's right. You're so funny. And then my second, I thought I was going to birth her in my bathtub. And then I just felt like my body said, I have to get out. And, and I got on land. Yeah. Yeah. And I went to my bed. And I rested a little bit. And then right when I was like started the pushing, um, I started kind of on my back because I was so tired. I was trying to rest between contractions. Yeah. And then I, I rolled over to my hands and knees. And again, I pushed her that way. And I mean, you can listen to our birth stories. That was a whole other thing. I think my body was telling me to get out of the water because she didn't breathe when she was first born. So we had yeah. other, other stuff going on. Um, and then my third, I was in the hospital and again, I was on the bed 
and on all fours i went to all fours again and that's when she like plopped down on the bed when she came out and, she <laughs> and then like my shot third, out yeah exactly and then my fourth even though i was in the water in the birth pool i started by sitting and then again i just felt like i needed to turn over and then i birthed her leaning over the, the edge yep. <laughs> on all fours it's just instinctual i think it is yeah it really is yeah and i saw somewhere that um the best way to open the pelvis the most in that position too is to have your knees in and your feet out and your feet out you can look at actual things where they show the body and it's crazy it actually shows that it opens up it's the coolest thing ever yeah whereas you think like you just need to open everything up right you think like oh i'm, I'm creating more space putting my knees out but it actually closes the pelvis just slightly it closes the pelvis. To going the other way knees in it opens the pelvis more i know it's, it's so cool crazy. you can go look it up on youtube it's the coolest thing ever yeah. they'll just show you like a skeleton it's so cool yeah yeah exactly yeah. it's cool so neat yeah um squatting when like you said though would be really good as well the i squatted thing. with um sophie because yeah. they said she had a poo and they just didn't want her face and her head to be submerged in there That's because right. of the meconium. Look. So she got me to stand up and hover. Yeah. It was hard because I was so tired and like, yeah. I really didn't want to stand in that moment, but yeah, it was better for everyone. Cause then we didn't have to take a trip to the hospital cause she ingested it. So yeah, it was better in the yeah. end. So I had both all fours and then squatting yeah yeah the biggest thing though is not on your back i've seen people still have a baby and it was great like my friend who just had a baby in february she was on her back and wow. it was crazy like instinctually i was like oh my gosh because i went to the bathroom because i felt lightheaded because i was a doofus i didn't eat and then it was like really late. And then the nurse, the doctor looks at me. She's like, um, Jacqueline, are you okay? You look like you're about to pass out. <laughs> All of a sudden it just came over me. I just felt like I was going to vomit. So I was like, I need a second. Where's the bathroom? And I went out and I like, <sighs> and like prayed. And I was like, God help me right now. Like what is going on? And I think it was honestly just my blood sugar. And also she was on her back and it actually worried me. Um. I was like, Oh no, she's on her back. How's this going to end? Like it actually scared me. Yeah. So <laughs> I would say a hundred percent. If you can advocate for yourself that you are either squatting or on all fours, all fours is the best because if you're tired, you're able to rest. Absolutely mm -hmm. what Petra said. Yeah. It'll make it a lot easier. Yeah. But you're right. Like it's possible to be on your back and give birth and not she tear. She did. She did pretty fast and she didn't tear. I remember when she was checking for tearing and I was looking because I was so curious and yeah she's like oh you didn't tear and the baby i don't know i'd have to look at how long she pushed it's on her charts but i would say maybe maybe 15 20 minutes so it wasn't that bad at all it wasn't like an hour or two but some people do push that long so just yeah. depends you just want gravity on your side yeah you're less likely to tear if you have gravity helping it's true absolutely because the baby more natural they have to go up and down, right? Yeah. That's how they come out, right? So it's like, if you don't have gravity helping you get up on that slope and down, like, how do you think that's going to happen? Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of information saying that it helps when you're not, you know, when you don't have the gravity, how it can affect your birth of your child. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Sure. Educate yourself. I wish yeah. I knew a lot more. I wish I knew what I knew now as a doula <laughs> for my <laughs> own birth. Yeah. But that's okay. Now I get to educate other people. So, yeah. yeah. That's oh, all for today. Oh, that, that. That I was going to say, that was the point that we missed. Which educating one? yourself. Oh, yes. Educate yourself. Absolutely. There's so many books. There's so many podcasts. 
There's so many things on the web that you can find. You can talk to people that have already had, you can, you know, talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. There's so much information out there, but if you're educated, you're just one step ahead, you know, mm -hmm. you can help yourself from having interventions or whatever, or tearing, you know, lots mm -hmm. of different things. Even babies getting stuck. We've talked about that pressure. There's ways that you can avoid that, you know? So yeah, yeah. yeah. that'll be another thing that we can talk about. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like do, even if you do all of these things, it's still possible that you might have a first degree tear. Yeah. Or you could have more than that. Or maybe more. You have no but idea. You're less likely to tear when you're educating yourself. Our last point, <laughs> um, listening to this podcast is the beginning of educating yourself, yeah. uh, learning some of the different points, the different ways to do it. Yeah. So it doesn't mean we can't promise you and say, hey, if you do all these things, you're not going to tear. Yeah. We don't know. But we do know that it makes it more likely that you'll be able to avoid it. Yeah, absolutely. And yep. like you said, you did you didn't have anything to prepare and you didn't tear. So you know we don't know like with certainty whether we will or we won't, but nope. why not take every step you can to help avoid it, right? Absolutely. Because it's not fun, I've heard. Mm -hmm. Is it Petra? No. <laughs> no. I it also depends on where you tear exactly because like I know we talked about like in describing the degrees of tears mm -hmm. that it goes down towards your anus, but it's also possible to tear upwards. I, d I had that with my second, the one that was really bad and that was not fun. <laughs> no. And yeah, you just, why not? You know, if you can avoid it, if you can try and avoid it and do things that could help. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? If you would have done the gentle pushes, maybe she wouldn't have made you tear, right? That's my guess. I yeah. mean, I can't get back in time. I don't know for sure, but. No, but absolutely. It can make a huge world of a difference. Mm -hmm. So if you're having a baby, educate yourself before you go into your labor and your birth and just know that you can have some tools in your back pocket absolutely and you yeah never yeah. know what it, never know what the outcome could be if you're just more prepared mm -hmm. but i can promise you when i have my fifth baby in a few months here well, i'm sure. using some of these <laughs> tools pulling mm -hmm. them out of my back pocket and saying okay i'm gonna try this one this one and this one because you bet. Even though it's my fifth baby, that's still something that's in the back of my mind. Like, I don't want to tear. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll share all about that when it happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. few yeah. more months. Crazy. few more months. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Time flies. Well, guys, we hope you learned something. Thanks for being with us. Yeah. And uh, let us know any other um, topics you can think of if you want us to talk on them. And uh, we just want to get the word out there that uh, there's ways, you know, around things that can help. And, yeah, we just want to educate people. Mm -hmm. Pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. Everything. It's yeah. all beautiful. It doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be lonesome <laughs> absolutely there's lots of fun in it too exactly. so until next time i have empty water <laughs> <laughs> it's okay <laughs> what what the, the mom? Mom?